All right, coach. Thanks for having me. You're sitting in Harvard. Listen, I got to tell you, I'm nervous as can be. We're sitting, this is like hallowed ground, right? This has history on top of history. We walked did a little walk through a little bit ago. You, talk, you said Teddy Roosevelt. You're throwing out these names, right? So my first question to you is, if I'm nervous about the history, does the mystique of Harvard, is it hard to, is it, is it hard to recruit with the mystique of Harvard? Is that an obstacle when you're recruiting wrestlers? Uh, that's a good question, Rob. Um, I still get the feeling that you that you got when I come here every day. I, I'm in awe of this place, so it, it's pretty cool. Um, the mystique is is one thing because people people hear about Harvard, right? They know about oh, it's for the elite or whatever. But once you get here and you meet people, that's the biggest turnaround of of. There's people like you and me walking around, and, and what I always say is this, the the difference is that. They're driven, they, they know what they want, they're, they're hardworking people, they're leaders. Um, the type of student athlete, the type of students, the type of coaches, the type of professors that are here are just high level driven people and, and they change your life. And that's kind of the biggest difference. It's not like, like when I came here way so many years ago, I was wondering if I was gonna fit in, right? So I know I start meeting people and, and it's, it's, it's been uh, a blessing. And I've, this place has changed my life to the point where I can't give back, right? So, so that's how I feel about it. But, but I think the biggest thing is to get on campus, to, to meet people and you start seeing, wow, wow this place is, it's not unattainable. You know, it, it's, it's actually reachable. So you've been here how long? Uh, this is my 28th year. 28th year, so you started, you started in 94. Four or, five. four or five when you were 12 years old 12, yeah. <laughs> you were in sixth grade when you started coaching right. here right. how in the world what brought you to Harvard way back then uh, okay so I mean I, um, this is a good story actually my I was assistant at Brown okay uh, for two years and when, right, right when I got out of college I got I was very fortunate to be right place right time I felt uh, I got a head coaching job at a division three school in Bethlehem called Moravian College and I was 22 years old didn't know what the heck I was doing and I was there for two years, but I knew I wanted to get in Division One. So Brown job opened up. Uh, I competed in that same conference, and luckily Coach Amato gave me a chance. Mm -hmm. And then as this job opened up, my coach at Franklin Marshall wrestled for Harvard. Okay. So his hat was in in here, and I was in communication with him the whole time. Like, so he's like, "Hang on, because if even if I get the job, I don't know if I'll take it. If I get the if I take the job, then the job at F and M opens." So. I was kind of two resumes in two different places. Mm -hmm. He gets the job I, on a Friday. I call him on Sunday, congratulate him, and he tells me that he just called back and turned it down and pushed for me. Mm. They bring me back up, and I get the job. So okay. it's kind of very interesting. Like I just wanted to be the best of the rest because I figured they would give it to a Harvard grad first. And yeah. then when he said he turned it down, I was like, all right. So then I get here, I'm like, all right, now what? Right? I mean, he's a part-time head coach, right? Like, like the program was down. Yep. And, and I didn't know Harvard the way Harvard is, right? To me, it was a coaching job, and I, I figured I was going to come here and, and work hard, and it's either gonna open up a door somewhere else, another opportunity, or they're gonna solidify the program, right? So mm -hmm. I'm still here, and it, mm -hmm. it's kind of interesting how it played out. And the more I, the longer I was here, the more I realized how powerful this place is. And and, and this is the type of people that, that, that came into my life that, I met my wife here, obviously, so he raised the family here. Like, like to me, I can't pay back. And, and the, the biggest thing is, is what, whether it's my assistant coaches or my colleagues, um, but my students that I coach, um, they're my friends forever, right? And some, some of my best friends are guys that I've coached, and, and um, that's special to me. I, I realize that I'm in a relationship building business, and that's, that's why this place is so special. Is, so, is it safe to say that you had no idea that you'd be here this long? No way. <laughs> Come on. I, I didn't know that. I didn't know I was going to do that. Right? And, and it was, again, to me at the time, it was, a, it was a job. And I was like, all right, where can I go? You know, and, and I'm just going to work hard. And, and one of those two things are going to happen. Right? So as then you stay here longer, then you're like, I feel like I got the best job. Right? To me, you know, with the, with the people that I'm around. So. We just walked through the facilities. Obviously, there's an upgrade. Let's get to that in a second. Before then, I want to know, how has coaching changed from when you started coaching here? You've been in one institution for as long as you've been. How do you coach now compared to how you coached then? How has it changed? 
Uh, that's a that's a million dollar question. Um, you get into coaching because you love the X's and O's, right? You love the technique. You love to, to compete. And, and and the longer you're in it, you realize as as a head, you, you're dealing with a lot more, right? So so I had a, I struggled with this when, you know, way back when I was making that transition of okay, you know, I got to do all this, and then I've got to. I gotta let think people do some of the stuff and take over a different issue, whether it's fundraising or whether it's uh, recruiting or, or whatever it is. Where where do you see the program? Like again, you know, you gotta for where do I see myself five, ten years from now in the program, and where, what do I want to do, and how do I want to create things, and what do I, you know, I didn't understand at that time that I, I really want to get my my alums connected with my athletes so they can get internships and jobs. Mm. So that's like one thing snowballed from another. How do I, how do, I do leadership development with my guys? Mm -hmm. well, way back, I, I, I was in the practice room and I asked my guys, like, well, how many of you guys have been captains of their high school team? Just by whim, I was like, and every hand went up. And I'm like, I'm not utilizing this. I've got all these leaders. How do I develop more? Mm -hmm. So I, I have a leadership development program. You know, I was like, it, it's, so things kept going and going and, and so it took me away from, from what I love to do. And then I realized like, what, what's my role? Is my, role my role is to really get my guys ready for the real world, right? Make sure, like to, I always say, my, my mantra is to make them great 15 years from now, mm -hmm. right? And, and if I'm doing that, the fixing their high crotch finish is the easiest part of our job, mm -hmm. right? So, so that, that's how my, my role changed from, you know, I wanna win to I wanna bring in good people, I wanna teach good, good character, I want to get them to understand what it's like to be a good leader, a good good father, a, you know, a good husband, you know, a good, good contributor to society through things that we do by playing a game at the highest level, okay? And then what I always say is that eventually you're going to take those boots off mm -hmm. and what do you have, mm -hmm. right? And, and, and that's what I want to try to, you know, like, we, we have high standards. We, we call them uncompromised standards. There's certain things we will not compromise with. Right, so they'll butt, they'll butt their heads with me on, on certain things, and that's fine because I know what I'm doing for a reason, mm -hmm. and, and that and that's kind of what we do, and, and that's where my I went from. We want to develop great guys on the mat to I want to develop a great person who who exceeds on the mat. I don't think it's one or the other, right? So I don't understand why someone has to wants to want to be great in one aspect of their life and not every aspect of their life. And the difference is as you mature, grow up. You take some things off your plate, right? So I, I just don't think you can you can sacrifice character and success. I think they go together. So and and that, maybe that's hard for changing me, right? So I uh, I'm not sure I, I felt that way at 25, right? Or 12, right? You know, right. Like, <laughs> right. So so outside fan looking into the program now, I can I can from a pessimistic standpoint, I can say of course he's going to have people with with character. Of course, it's Harvard. Mm -hmm. Right, it's just setting these kids up for success. But is that necessarily true? You, you, what kind of student athlete are you recruiting here? What is, what does someone need to be like in order to walk into Harvard, be successful in the classroom, be successful in the in the wrestling room? But you haven't yet mentioned anything about their accolades on the mat at the NCAA tournament or at um, you know conference tournaments. You haven't even mentioned their success. You're talking about raising good kids. So are you picking from the cream of the crop or is it, is it just, you know, a, a work in progress that you're constantly having to do, whether you're a Harvard coach or you're, you're a coach at a division three school. Somewhere? Well, I mean, I think it's both of what you just said, but, I, but where, where, where I changed is when I first started, uh, I was going after great wrestlers, mm -hmm. right? So I, I, we took program from kind of zero to success real quickly, but that happens when you just bring in someone new, right? And then I started spinning my tires, and I'm wondering why these wrestlers aren't getting admitted. Notice I said wrestlers, right? So I met with a former dean of the college, and, and he was retired, and, and, I, and he was working at the admissions office, and I asked him, what are you looking for in an applicant? And at one time did he talk about SATs, GPA, or class rank. For an hour, we talked about character. Hmm. And I, I walked back, still young and dumb, and I walked back and I changed what I was doing. And I'm like, all right, I'm gonna go after high, cali high caliber people that wrestle really, really well. Hmm. What did I do with my pool? I went like this, I hmm. shrunk my pool. Yeah. So you can say I'm only going after the elite, but, I'm, but my pool's very small. 
right? And, and I've realized that, that that's what I want to coach anyway. When I'm here at 0700 for a workout, I got a smile on my face because I love my job. The person that I'm working with better have a smile on their face, right? Mm. So three recruiting classes after I felt like I made that change, we won the Ivy League for the first and only time in school history and the EIWA for the first and only time in school history. Hmm. And I sat there and I said, do you think that had anything to do with me changing my, my structure in recruiting? And to this day, I believe it has, right? So, but whether, whether it did or not, but it, it, what it did is made me realize what the type of person I want to coach, right? I want to coach someone who wants to be great on the mat, that wants to be great in the classroom. And more importantly for me, is, as I've evolved, is wants to be a great man. Right, I mean that's the point where I need to make sure my guys are ready for the real world and going off to do bigger and better things. And this is just part of their lives. And it only works if they pour themselves into it. They got to pour themselves into it. You got to want to. You got to want to. You got to want to be on the top. Mm -hmm. You got to want to. You got to want to win. It, you know, like you got to want to place in the NCAA tournament. That's the best. And then, then what? Then, and that's where you know I think life doesn't stop there. You know, like you got to keep going. What's academic life like here? I. I can't even imagine, right? Again, it's that mystique that's stuck in my head maybe, but I guarantee you that that is out there in the general public. Oh, he's gonna go wrestle at Harvard? Oh, he's got his work cut out for him. What's academic life? What's the pressures like here? Or is it just, you know, it is what it is like it would be anywhere else? Uh, I, would, I would say it's difficult, okay? Um, I would say there's, there's certain things that, that if you're a procrastinator, this place doesn't work, it'll eat you up, right? If, if, you, if you like to work hard. You get caught into it's kind of like a whirlpool. Like you come in here and everybody else is doing the same thing. Like everybody's working. You know, like it's not like I'm just gonna come here and, and, and just go to practice and not do anything. You you get everybody's doing the same thing, so you have no other choice. And and um, it's challenging. Um, it's doable. We've had one of the highest GPAs in the country in the last number of years. So there's certain things that we have in play. Another part of this process of you come here academically, I've got to make sure you're doing the right things, you know, right away. Because if you don't do the job in the classroom, it doesn't help us on the mat. It doesn't it doesn't reflect as well in the admissions office. It's going to hurt us in the future when we go after. So we've it's all tied in. You're expected to be great in the classroom when you get here. So there are certain things that we do to make to ensure that. To, so you're doing the right things. You're studying the right way. You're, you're taking the right courses um, in, in, in certain things. So it's hard. It's doable. It's, we've proven it, right? You know, like the guys, like J.P. O'Connor won a national title with 3.7 GPA in human evolutionary biology. Hmm. No, one, no one beat him. So you can do it. Don't tell me you can't do it. Right. It's a matter of what you're willing to give up, right? I mean, you want to be great in the classroom. You want to be great on the mat. You want to be a great person. What else are you going to give up? You know, I, I think that's what it comes down to. That's where my pool strengths. Yeah. Even I want, so then we, we say that when we, in this process, we say this, this is everything on the table because you're gonna walk away saying, I just wanna wrestle or I want what, I can see that by what they're doing. You know, like I want that. And that, that's what we want. We want someone that says, you know what? That's challenging, it's hard, but man, I can go to the best school in the world and, and, and still win a national title, it's pretty cool. What kind of support does a student athlete get here? From uh, in, in which way? I mean, academic, uh, academically. I mean, so you're never gonna have a student and a student athlete. You're always, they're all students. So no, the student athlete gets the same amount as, as the students do. Okay. Uh, and it, and it's to me, I think it's so much. It's you have, you have. I feel like you have like a big safety net underneath you, like you know, as far as people looking out for you. If it gets past me, which it probably doesn't, because I'm in their lives way more than they want. Mm -hmm. um, if it gets past me, there's so many people that, that will reach out and be like, hey, let's make sure we're, we're looking at this person or you know getting this person help and and. If we have to go outside my team, which we don't have to as much, a lot, there's plenty of uh, you know student support system you know, groups who are you know whatever you need to you know to, um, writing course whatever it is, uh, it's very accessible. So it's, there's a lot of support. Being here as long as you've been, I can't imagine you don't have support from the administration. What, what you know? How does the administration think about wrestling here, and and you know what kind of support do you get as a coach? Uh, this place wants to be successful in everything, um, you know, whether it's, you know, my sport or any other sport, right? So it's like um, being here this long, we're, we're sitting in a seven and a half million dollar renovation, that's support, right? Like that's showing that our alums are all, all for it. Um, our administration wants to do, do well, you know, in, in everything. So it's, it's, 
I think it's, uh, I don't know if I'd be here if I, I didn't feel supported, quite honestly. So um, I love this place and the, the people in the department because everybody wants to win. Everybody, you know, and it's, I think it's cool to say, you know, yeah, I, you know, well, it's Harvard. Because everybody says, oh, it's Harvard. You know, you're not supposed to be great at athletics, but <laughs> there's, that's not true here. Right. <laughs> so we can do both. You right. know, that's, that's our big thing. So I have a tremendous amount of support. And especially in wrestling, too. I mean, I, I think it's one of those sports that crosses all, um, you know, races, now genders, right, and, yeah. and eco, you know, ec economic um, factors. So why not? Why couldn't you compete yep. from Harvard and, and be successful in wrestling? And you do. You have, you have um, two national champs that are on pictures behind you. What's your, what are your, your goals for the team? Let's talk about just wrestling prowess right now. What do you want to do with the team? What goals are you setting every single year with these kids? And um, how do you gauge that success? I, I think we, we want, uh, we, we always talk about the best version of ourselves. Like how, how can I get individually, I can get everyone to be the best version of themselves. And collectively you put that together and you hope, you know, you can line things up. Obviously it's, it's difficult here numbers wise, you know, we don't get as many uh, as, as other schools. And I stopped worrying about that a long time ago. If I get the right people, we can do well, right? So it's a matter of uh, dealing with injuries and, and, and if we can balance that out. But we, we train for three days in March, just like everybody else. Like we're after the same prizes as all, you know, all the other schools. And we want guys placing in the NCAA tournament. We want to get, get guys back in the center mat. That's, that's our biggest goal. And we, we, we say that right away. I mean, you know, when, when freshman comes in here, he's, we, we tell him you're expected to place in the NCAA tournament because it's already happened. So you're not going to be the first. You're not going to be the last. Um, so we want to get that there. And the, you know, and that's hard when you kind of, you kind of get banged around here first, first semester academically, socially, it's a new, new, er, new area. And we've got to watch that. And we've got to smooth, make sure everything's smooth on that. But we want guys to be great you know, individually and we, and we collectively understand, like if, if 20 guys are doing that, where are we as a team? So that's kind of where we want to go. Uh, we got a large, large group coming back with a great class coming in. Um, I think it's one of my best cultures that I've had since I've been here, which is saying a lot, mm. um, you know, which is, I'm anxious to see what happens this summer and, and the kind of steps we make. Um, this past year was, was with COVID and injuries, it was, it was very difficult. Um, but we got through it, and I think you know once we guys get get healthy, we're gonna we're gonna have a nice team next year and the next coming years, quite honestly. So we're looking to climb. We got, obviously our conference is difficult, you know, you know with the Ivies and and the, and the IWAs. Um, but I think we're gonna be right right in the mix with with some guys. That's for sure. I'm glad you mentioned uh, socially because Bright Lights, big city, right? Where you, you're, Boston is right right next door. You know, the, I mentioned the mystique now three times, I think, since of, of Harvard. Big city. What kind of social life do the kids have here? How do they blow off steam? Huh. Uh, these guys have a good time. Um, I, I make sure that I recruit that type of person. Just, uh, it's, I, just, I need to laugh every day. So I need to be around people that are like that. Mm -hmm. um, um, quite honestly, Boston isn't like... We don't usually use Boston from September to, to May. Okay. It's difficult. Mm -hmm. It's just too, much, too many things going on. I think guys that stay up here in the summer utilize that, mm -hmm. you know, the Sox games or, or, or something like that. Um, uh, but Cambridge, is, this is a nice place. I, mm -hmm. think, I think they figured out, a, you know, a way to, you know, kind of really blow off some steam when need to. And, and there's, a, there's a time to, cut, you know, cut it off as well. And, and I think uh, if, if you build a culture that understands that, uh, I feel pretty confident in the culture that we've had where they'll, they'll enjoy themselves to a certain point in the season. And then... You know, once we start, and it's kind of shut down until you know third week in March, and we kind of go from there. So, um, you know, I, I don't think I think if you would ask our guys, that they, they they find ways to have a good time. Recruiting, reaching into Ohio, you've had a few um, on the team. Reaching beyond Ohio, reaching to California. I think I saw maybe George's yeah. on the team. It's, and what kind of individual? You've mentioned character, and I know that that's going to be a staple item, but. Um, one of the things I like to ask coaches is I want you to talk to the wrestling mom. I want you to recruit their, their son to come here to Harvard and wrestle. Th talking straight to the wrestling mom, what kind of things do you say? Uh, I, I want to know um, what else. You know, I, I, I think you know, anybody can recruit a great wrestler, right? But I, I want to know the character. I mean, you think about it, right? Um, 
for especially the people who are recruiting now, I, I've been doing this way longer. They've been on this earth, right? Like I've been so blessed to be in, in around some of the greatest people in, in the sport of wrestling, uh, as far as my assistant coaches and, and however you know whoever have been with me, right? So I've been impacted by some of the best um, that's been around. So I don't have all the answers, but I got more than them, right? Mm -hmm. So <laughs> yeah. you know, like, yeah. and, and it's a matter of a trust thing. So it's a, I, I think trust is built, right? So I. I got to build that trust, and do I have someone who I'm talking with that I feel um, will do that with me, right? Will allow me to help build, build that trust. That who will be in my office at two o'clock to kind of just hang out and you know watch something on you know or watch a match or watch ESPN or, or somebody that, that can understand that. I understand that I'm the closest thing to mom and dad that they have, right? I, I coach as a parent. My wife's the same thing, right? So it's like we, we have the same ideal as as a, like. Eight, I think 18 to 22 is very difficult now, all right? It's mm. a lot different than we grew up, mm -hmm. right? So I understand that, and, and I want to make sure I can navigate these. Because if I'm not doing that, it does not matter what we're doing in the wrestling room. Right. Because it, it, we don't, we don't, it's not going to work with the pressures here. So we've got to navigate all these waters, whether it's, you know, academics, whether it's social, you know, whether it's somebody homesick or whatever it is. We've got to navigate that. We can't just, you know, train them. You know, like that's part of it, you know, like... So that, that's the biggest thing where, where I look into. I, I, and I've got to find that person that's going to be willing to say, yeah, I want you to lead me, right? And, and you know, you know and, and, and there's a trust thing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do things in your life that, that, that you might not like me. And I'm going to push you in directions where I might see more of you than you see of you. Mm -hmm. you. And because I've seen it done before, right? So trust me that, that I'm, I'm going to do that. So that's a big thing for me. And, you know, I, I, again, you look at, you know, how many great wrestlers in high school didn't do anything in college, right? Right. You know, like how many, how many, not, how many guys that didn't do anything in high school do great in college? Right. Like, it's like, you don't know. And, and, and I think a character thing is, is where we can get somebody to understand that there's going to be a lot of things pulling in different directions. Just trust in people that have been there before and just go understand that you're going to work hard and, and harder than in every aspect of your life. So that's the difference. Like, you know, and I always say like, I'm, I'm not gonna make you a champ. You're gonna make yourself a champ because you're gonna be making these different, these difficult decisions of how am I gonna balance all these things. So, you talked about the renovation. Mentioned it. We'll do a walkthrough here and get make sure that we highlight that. <clears throat> but how important to you? I mean, obviously through the years you've seen a lot of change out here and in, in, in offices and stuff. So how important to you was it to make sure that this place was spruced up? Uh, I mean, the, the, this is this renovation has been like a six-year plan. Like, like we really we raised um, we were able to raise five million dollars in about a year and a half, and then we just got stalled. You know, like we were trying to figure out where we're going to go and, and what we're going to do with this. Um, and it, it was no at nobody's fault, but but we're just timing right. And then COVID hit, obviously pushed us back a little bit more. Um, that being said. What we have now is is, is unbelievable. And, and it, to me, like it's been a dream, right? Like for so long, it's been a dream. Like we need a new room, and it's not about keeping up with the Joneses. For us, is I want it our guys to have a pride in where they're training. Mm -hmm. I want my alums to have a pride in where our guys are are, are training and 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 at a home, and um, that's where it's special to me. Um, Again, this has been a long time coming. So if, when it finally came in, it, it, it exceeded expectations. It really did, as far as th that how it benefited our guys. Uh, how proud my alums are when they come back. I'm like, wow, we didn't have this. This is awesome, right? So that's what's cool about it, and, and um, couldn't be happier. It shows a huge uh, support. Like, like you know, wrestling means something. Right? We wouldn't have done this if. if you know, my alums would not have done this if it if it didn't mean anything. The administration would not would have would not have let it happen, right? So uh, it shows like, hey, we're we're gonna we're gonna be here. We want we want people to come here and be great. It's always nice to have that new carpet smell and yeah. the lights coming in. You mentioned air air conditioning yeah. for the first time, but what you said was it created a home. Yeah. So that's the intangibles that you're gonna get from this, right? Yeah. You created a home for your wrestlers to come hang out. Um, the renovations in the locker room, they just now they hang out. That's the intangibles, right? Absolutely, especially in the locker room, they'll be doing study groups, they'll be taking naps, whatever it may be. They come in here, and, and I need to know what's. I need to be in their lives, right? So when they're when they're in my office, then that, that helps me. I, I shut everything down and just kind of hang out with them, and, and that's important to me. 
um, so I know what's happening and, and maybe they had a bad exam, they need to talk about it or whatever, something's happening at home. So I need to be, you know, there's people in this, these offices constantly, which is a good thing. When I, my old office was upstairs, so I didn't have that as much, so I didn't have that flow. Um, I love it now, anytime I hear a weight move, I, I quick run over who's working out, like, mm -hmm. I love that, you know, so um, it's been great, it's been phenomenal. So. Will you? Do you have another twenty eight years oh, in you? <laughs> I'm going. I, I love my job. Yeah. I, I I I have more drive now than I've ever had. Quite honestly, I, I think I want to do it a certain way. I, I want to bring in the right people and 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 do it. I want to win more now than ever. Right, mm -hmm. but I want to do it this way. So, uh, and that's hard for changing me and, and, and for a good good way. You know, I, and I I, I just. I, I love what I'm doing. I, I know why I wake up in the morning, right? Like, it's to make other people's dreams come true, and it's, it's awesome. It's a great feeling. Well, you made my dream come true, <laughs> come so on. I appreciate you having me. Likewise. What's what's going on off season for the program? What are you doing? Uh, now? We just get done exams, so guys guys took off. We have uh, about four guys uh, going to compete in early June U23s, okay. um, and then what we'll do is some guys will be staying here this summer, and then other guys will come back. In July, just to kind of kind of get some workouts in, um, but it should be good. Um, we'll, we'll we'll always be in touch, you know, throughout the summer and figure out who's doing what. So good. good. U twenty three is coming up. We'll go from there. Yeah, that's in Ohio. Yep. <laughs> All right. Yep. We'll probably see you there. I think uh, Zeb will probably be there, and we're going to see if we can get. Awesome. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be out of town for a part of it, but um, but we'll, we'll have some presence there. So, um, what else you got for me, Coach? Well, I appreciate this time. It was fun. I always, I always like talking about our program. I'm very proud of it. I'm proud of the guys that have come in the past, um, guys that I'm close with, uh, and and guys that are kind of looking to do something in the future. Um, so it's it's always fun to talk about the differences and and and, and how I changed, right? Like, and in, in, I came here just wanted to win, and now I want to win, but I want to win a different way. And I know what my role is. Like, I'm dealing with you know people that are going to go change the world, which is really awesome, you know, so I, in, in turn, I feel like I can change the world if I impact the 25 guys on my team, so that's kind of where I'm at. I, I appreciate you peeling back the curtain because the perception, at least in my mind, is, is like I said, this mystique that's out there, so uh, being candid with me and, and allowing me to come in, I really appreciate that. That's awesome. Very Thanks. Good. Good.